Butterflies for Kiri by Katherine Falwell. Kiri loved to draw and paint and make things. On Kiri's birthday, Auntie Lou sent a special gift. It had a purple paper butterfly perched on the top. Inside was a package of colored paper squares and a book called Origami, the Art of Paper Folding. The book showed how to fold the papers into wonderful things. There was a turtle, a boat, a bird, and a butterfly, just like the one Auntie Lou had made for Carrie's package. Carrie gently slid the beautiful papers from the package. She spread them out like a rainbow, purples, pinks, blues, greens, yellows, oranges, and reds. Carrie ran her finger softly over the papers. They were as thin as butterfly wings. Carrie opened the origami book and looked at the drawings inside. The book had diagrams that showed how to do each step. There were fold arrows and unfold arrows. There were valley fold lines that folded inward and mountain fold lines that folded backward. Fold crisply, the book said, crease sharply. Kiri looked at Auntie Lou's butterfly. It had crisp folds, just like the ones in the book. Kiri studied the diagrams. There were 15 steps to make a butterfly. Kiri chose a sheet of bright purple paper that matched Auntie Lou's butterfly. Then she looked at the first diagram and carefully folded her paper the same way, corner to corner, with a crisp, neat crease. Kiri looked at the next step and folded her paper in half again. For the next step, all the corners had to meet in the center. Kiri folded her paper, but the corners didn't match up. She tried again, but it was hard to get the folds just right and the old creases still showed. Kiri tried the next step, but the thin purple paper tore a little along an old crease line. Her beautiful paper, a tear ran down her cheek. Wiping her eyes, Kiri tried the next fold. The paper tore again. It's ruined, Kiri cried. She wanted to start over, but she was afraid of tearing another sheet. Sadly, she gathered up the rest of the papers and slid them safely back into the package. The next day, Kiri carefully slid the origami papers from the package and spread them out like a rainbow. Purples, pinks, blues, greens, yellows, oranges, and reds. The colors danced before her eyes. Kiri wanted to try folding a butterfly again, but she didn't want to ruin another sheet of the beautiful paper. She took a piece of notebook paper and cut it into a square. Then very carefully, Kiri folded the steps in the origami book. This time, she got to the ninth step before the paper tore. Some days after school, Kiri made chalk drawings. Other days she painted or made things with clay. And every day she practiced making origami butterflies. One Saturday morning, Kiri went to the park to play. It was a perfect spring day. She went high on a swing and saw the bright blue sky and new green grass. Pink petals from the trees blew gently in the breeze. Kiri skipped by the bright red and purple tulips shining up from the garden on her way home. A yellow butterfly fluttered around the flowers. The colors danced before Kiri's eyes. She couldn't wait to get home to make a picture. Quickly, Kiri got out her watercolor paints, a brush, a jar of water, and a big sheet of paper. She dipped the brush into the water and then into the blue paint. With long strokes, she painted the bright sky she rinsed her brush and dipped it into the green paint. Slowly and carefully, Kiri painted the spring grass. Kiri rinsed her brush again, and this time she chose the red of the tulips. But as soon as her brush touched the grass, the red paint leaked into the wet green and made a muddy puddle. Kiri tried to scrub away the spot, but the paper got soggy and began to shred. It's terrible, Kiri cried. Mama came into the kitchen. I see the spring colors from the park, Mama said. What a nice picture. No, it's ruined, Kiri sobbed. Kiri ran to her room. She was about to fling herself onto her bed when she saw the package for origami papers. Carefully, she spread out the colors like a rainbow. Purples, pinks, blues, greens, yellows, oranges, and reds. There was the bright red of the tulip she had tried to paint. Kiri took her scissors and cut a shape from the corner of the red paper. Then she took everything to the kitchen. The red paper tulip looked perfect on her painting. Kiri smiled and glued the shape over the muddy spot. 
Scraps of purple, pink, blue, green, orange, and red floated onto the table as Kiri cut more and more shapes to add to her picture. The colors began to dance. Kiri looked over her colored papers again and chose a bright yellow square. She took a deep breath and folded it into a beautiful butterfly. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a traditional origami butterfly. This is just like the one that Kiri makes in the book we just read. Okay, so start with a fresh sheet of origami paper. And this butterfly is more difficult than the other one we showed. So just be really patient with yourself, okay? And just keep trying. So first, we're going to fold this paper in half. So grab this bottom, and you're gonna bring it to the top. Okay, now go ahead and unfold it. And this is also a lot like the tricky boat we made. The beginning steps are the same. So if you remember, you're going to take these bottom and top pieces, and you're going to bring them to the center. So go ahead and grab the bottom and bring it up. So it looks just like that. And then repeat on the other side. Okay, it'll look like this. Okay, now you're going to fold it in half. So bottom to top. Okay, and once you've creased that well, go ahead and unfold. So you see the center line that you created? You're going to bring both the bottom and the top to the center, just like we did before. So take the bottom to the center. It'll look like that, and then repeat on the other side. See, now you have this nice square shape. Okay, so go ahead and unfold these two pieces. So it's that nice long rectangle again. And just like with the tricky boat, you're going to take this bottom flap, and you're gonna bring it to the center. Okay, so hold it right here, pick up this flap, and bring it up so it makes that triangular shape. Crease it well, and then you're going to repeat on all four sides. It's going to look like that. And then push it down. And then you should have this shape okay and now this is where it gets different than the tricky boat so to make the butterfly grab two of these pick a side grab these two flaps bring them down so they look like this and now you're gonna take this whole top piece okay it almost looks like the top of a house right so grab it flip it over and fold it up See, so you see this crease? Bring it up and meet it to this top. It'll look just like this. See, you're almost done. Now flip it back over. Take these little sides, and to make the body of the butterfly, just pinch them up. It doesn't have to be perfect or uniform. This just shows how much of the sides of the body are gonna go in. So do it like that, and repeat on the other side. So it'll look like this. Now go ahead and you're going to fold the butterfly in half to make a crease. Okay, so you have half a butterfly and it'll look like this. 
Now you're going to grab this middle part, just pinch it. And as you open it, just hold that closed. You see how it makes the bottom of the butterfly spread out? Go ahead and crease it well. And you did it. You made your own traditional origami butterfly, just like the one that Kiri made. Hurry and the Monarch by Antoine O. Flatharda. Hurry the Texas tortoise is starting to think about winter, when out of the bright October sky a monarch butterfly lands on his back. What do you call this place? asks the monarch. Wichita Falls, says Hurry, and that's my back you're standing on. Wichita Falls. Not far enough, says the monarch. Not far enough for what? asks Hurry. For staying, replies the monarch. With that, the monarch opens her wings and flies off Harry's back. I leveled Hurry now. The monarch seems fascinated with the old tortoise. How long have you been here? asks the monarch. Seems like forever, says Hurry. Maybe one day you'll break out of that shell, grow wings, and fly away, says the monarch. I doubt it, says Hurry. It happened to me, replies the monarch, thinking about that extraordinary morning when she first opened her wings. Where did this happen? asks Hurry. Far away, in a place called Canada, in a garden just like this. Why did you leave? asks Hurry. The days got colder, says the monarch. What do you do when the days get colder? Sleep, answers Hurry. Cold days always change back into warm days if you wait. I don't have time for that, says the monarch, flying away from the garden. She joins more monarchs. They turn the sky orange as they continue their journey south towards Sweetwater. Back in the garden, a cloud passes over the sun, and Hurry shuts his eyes. As the old tortoise begins to dream, the monarch travels on, resting at night in places you would expect to see a butterfly rest, and sometimes in places you would not. Each new day brings new sights, sometimes a day brings danger. But the monarch survives, fly now toward Eagle Pass, then over the waters of the Rio Grande in New Mexico. On and on she flies until finally, one November evening, she finds it, the warm green forest she had been searching for. She hangs from a bow, adding her tired wings to the soft murmur of a million others. The monarch in flight from winter knows she has found the perfect place. Spring returns to Hurry's garden. He slowly opens his eyes and feels the warmth of the sun. Never fails, thinks Hurry. Then one morning, the monarch also returns. So, where are you going now? asks Hurry. Back to the beginning, answers the monarch. Do you mean Canada? asks Hurry. Possibly, says the monarch. Butterflies can be infuriatingly and mysterious, thinks Hurry, watching the monarch lay eggs on a milkweed plant. Then she flies away. In the town of Stillwater, she flies in through an open window and thinks it might be nice to rest her worn wings for a while in the folds of a sun-colored curtain. For a while, it becomes forever. Back in the garden, over by the milkweed plant, Hurry sees a newborn caterpillar. Hello, says Hurry, but the caterpillar doesn't answer. He is too busy eating the milkweed leaves. Hurry watches and waits as the caterpillar grows, shedding skin after skin then crawling away to hide under a twig. But this garden is Hurry's whole world, and there is little in it that is hidden from him. In the weeks that follow, Hurry sees an amazing transformation happen right in front of his still and patient eyes. A new monarch emerges from the shell, wet and wrinkled. For a while, he clings to his empty shell, waiting for his wings to expand and dry in the warm sunshine. After a few hours, the monarch spreads his strong new wings and flies toward Hurry, landing on his back. What do you call this place? asks the monarch. Here we go again, says Hurry, as the monarch opens his wings and flies off Hurry's back. What's your hurry? asks Hurry. I'm off to see the world. What do you think it's like? asks the butterfly. I imagine, says Hurry slowly, I imagine that it's like my garden, a place full of astonishing things. I can't wait, says the young monarch, flying away.
Today I'm going to show you how to create this really simple origami butterfly. So it's kind of like a paper airplane, and I'll call this a floating butterfly. Because when you throw it, it's going to turn and turn around, and it's really fun to play with. So to make it, start with a fresh sheet of origami paper, and you're going to fold it in half. So this point on the bottom to this point. Go ahead and grab it and fold it perfectly in half. So it turns into that nice triangle shape. And then crease it well. Go ahead and unfold it. Turn the paper and you're going to repeat that same step. So you're going to fold it in half from this bottom point to this top point. Go ahead and grab it and fold it upward. Okay, and you're going to leave it folded just like this. So now, you're going to take this top point you created, and you're going to bring it so it reaches past the bottom. So it doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure that this top point is reaching past this bottom line, okay? So bring it down, it's going to look just like this. Okay, now you're going to take the model, and you're going to fold it perfectly in half, bottom to top. Okay, and it'll look like this. Now these are the wings, so go ahead and grab one and fold it down. And turn it around and you're going to do the same on the other side. Make sure that they match. So it'll look like that. And that's all. Wasn't that easy? You created your own floating butterfly to play with and have fun.